The World Wide Web was originally invented for scientists to share ideas and results. But how useful is it today? We went to Greensward College in Essex and set the staff the problem of coming up with their top 10 website for science teachers. These are their results. In 10th place on the list is the Teaching Physics site from the reliably accurate Institute of Physics. Uh, Institute of Physics, firstly, are uh, an organisation which I've come across before. I've been on a number of their courses, and their update courses, and they're really supportive towards teachers, and the site reflects that. Although um, I'm a biology teacher, um, I find that uh, obviously I have to teach physics, and it's very, very nice to be able to go to a site where you can be absolutely certain that the information that you're being given is going to be accurate. There's lots of uh, links to uh, useful websites and it's got lots of uh, new ideas on how to get across uh, the subject of physics in, in an interesting manner and they also um, host a questioning section on the website so teachers can ask questions and, and get a professional answer. And number nine is a site that, despite its bizarre name, contains masses of serious science information. The site's called uh, Squashed Frogs. Uh, it's a site which contains uh, information written by teachers for teachers. It's basically split up into the, the three sciences, plus um, it's got information for Science 1, and it's got all of the key stages are all included on there. And from that, you can select from a, a large range of different activities, different resources. Uh, there are things like um, games, there are PowerPoints which you can actually download from certain areas, um, and most of it has been written by teachers, and therefore they basically know what they're doing. Science teaching faces similar challenges all over the world, and the web allows resources from America to be used instantly. Our teachers chose one fun site as their number eight. Jefferson Labs, an American site. Um, it's based in Virginia, I think. But I've found, looking at it, that there's lots of resources on there that we can pull out in England and to be used for starters, um, possibly summary activities. Um, all the, all, most of these resources can be downloaded as PDFs as well to be used in a lesson or even set as homeworks. Things like crosswords, anagrams, who wants to be a millionaire, games like that. The Jefferson site has lots of interactive games, lots of things to play, fun, really fun activities that you can get hooked on playing for a long time and not even realising that they're educational. Some of the puzzles and games that are on there can really grasp the attention of possibly lower ability pupils, those who need to be engaged that little bit more. At number seven is the monstrously useful factmonster.com. Kids really struggle to remember the symbols of the periodic table. And this one's interactive and you click on any one of the elements and a whole new page loads up and they use it as a game to memorise all the, the elements and, and different um, aspects of each element, so the, the temperature that they melt at, boiling point, all those sort of things. Uh, there's games, puzzles, a homework help centre, all subjects. You click on your chosen subject and go to the homework help centre. It's very useful for students who are doing homework or doing their study at home. Returning to physics, our next website is full of resources. Resourcefulphysics.org makes number six. It's got loads of resources that are available to you and for all aspects of physics you can go on there and, and find a lot of information that you need, whether it's on ideas for experiments or it's uh, images which can be downloaded. There is a £100 charge for a network user, um, which I think can be really useful because then the students themselves can access the resources. One of the areas that I found particularly useful was in teaching air pressure. 
um, and I went onto the website and there are around 10 to 20 experiments that you can choose from. The fact that you can go on there and look up new and interesting experiments to teach a, a physics topic in a slightly different manner, um, I found really useful. We've reached the halfway point of our experiment to find the top 10 websites for science teachers. The forecast is good for the Met Office website. It's at number 5. The Met Office website is uh, based on weather, based on climate, environment, it can be used in a few of the different topics for Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4. It also has cross-curricular links with geography topics, uh, can be used in Year 8 ecology, Year 7 ecology, things in the environment, natural disasters has information on cyclones. There's a, a section on satellites, um, things on climate, so for adaptation, looking at different climates throughout the world for different animals and where they live and relating climate to uh, adaptation. The live uh, webcam links, so you can actually go to different places in the UK and look at the weather and what's happening and the weather patterns uh, throughout where you're living. In terms of education on the web, there's one beast that's always near the top of the utility chain. It's the BBC, naturally. The BBC have this ability using you know, incredibly innovative methods to actually get into the lives of these creatures and to actually help you to understand more about how they live and how you actually interact with them. The BBC Science and Nature website, I feel, should have been higher up the list. It's um, definitely easy to navigate through, it contains the information under specific headings, um, relevant topics, uh, and pictures and quizzes and uh, in interesting facts and lots of information. It promotes further learning and, and lifelong learning in students and, and investigating things that actually are relevant to them and maybe interesting to them. Searching for scientific information is always tricky, but our third place website works as an excellent portal. Top marks go to topmarks.co.uk. It's a lot more effective than using you know, a more universal search engine such as Google because you don't have to trawl through all the stuff that you're not going to need. Um, it's much more specific to teaching and learning. Top Marks is, is a bank of, of links to websites that you can search by the, the age group that you're teaching and by the subject that you're teaching. Um, it's very quick because you know what you want, search it and, and you'll find a list, a smaller list, let's say, of, of websites that you can then access and, and browse. Uh, the Top Marks website, yeah, even though you could use any other search engine uh, that's available on the, the internet, this one I think is particularly good to use because you're coming up with actual science websites that are usually made by governments or reputable sources and not someone who's just decided to put a site on the internet that may be uh, information that's completely wrong and irrelevant and not able to use in your classrooms. Say if you're searching for habitat as your topic, it, it won't just come up with the definition of habitat or one little thing on habitat, it'll come up with a whole range of resources, possibly worksheets, information around habitats and all the other topics that are linked to habitats, so populations, communities, ecology topics, all, all those will come up in your search as well. I haven't come across a link so far that has expired. Uh, I think that they do update it very regularly. It's clear to me that they do that, um, which again saves time and saves frustration um, in the long run when you're trying to plan lessons. An unexpected site came in at number two. Our teachers suggest that everyone should be Kung Fu, science, fighting. Kung Fu Science is, is a unique site. Um, it, it, it manages to make physics relevant um, to everyone in a way, using Kung Fu, which, which I find quite different, really. It links physics and biology in a fun way, um, but it's also good science. There's video footage of uh, a guy breaking three bricks and as he's doing it he's saying and my hand needs to speed up as it goes through and he's explaining it in physics terms. So the physics of the thing as far as I'm concerned is I need to get my hand 
all the way through this stack of blocks, which means I can't afford to slow down when I get halfway because I've still got another block to get through. The way it works is there's a timeline and you can run through different aspects, different physics aspects, and it, you, on your screen there's little uh, dots that move along as you go through each of the, the physics type parts. And the, the first part is the uh, introduction of the, the Kung Fu master showing his little black belt thing, and then first physics topic of speeding up and, and breaking the three bricks, and then on into each topic to look at them in more detail. Anything that can help kids to have a better understanding of physics around them and how things actually work related to physics is definitely helpful. And what did the staff of Greensward College make their number one site for science teachers? Before we find out, let's recap 10 down to 2. At 10, teaching physics. At 9, squash frogs. At eight, Jefferson Lab. At seven, Fact Monster. At six, Resourceful Physics. At five, The Met Office. At four, BBC Science and Nature. At three, Top Marks. At two, Kung Fu Science. Science News for Kids combines quality resources for science lessons and articles about current hot topics. As a result, it's our number one. The Science News for Kids website is uh, split into different topics. It has animals, it has earth, uh, environment, uh, all, all physics, chemistry, all the different topics are split and the news go, articles go into each topic. The best feature I think I found on the site is the search facility and you can just put in whatever keyword that your lesson's about and it spits out all the different um, news articles, the recent articles. You can even arrange them in uh, how recent they are or, or how related to the keyword that they are. Science News for Kids is, isn't just about news. I think it's got an awful lot more to offer than that. Um, it has areas which you can use for um, whole class activities as well as having areas where you can actually take resources to actually use as a teaching tool in a, in a classroom situation. An added feature of the site is to help students to be a part of it and, and have a, a comment or a say on uh, what's going on around them. There's, they can rate the article, they can provide feedback and, and, and have a say on, on what's, what's happening around them. There are lots and lots of interesting um, articles, lots and lots of activities for the students to do games and uh, puzzles and quizzes and things like that. There's something about the site, it's, it's easy to navigate and, and you just puts everything in, into topics that you can quickly search through and, and have it right in front of you and, and use it to engage students right at the beginning of your lesson and it's so connected to the real world that students can understand what's happening around them every day that they come to science. You can find all the sites mentioned in this programme and more on our website at teachers.tv. Happy clicking!